Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the States FC. On Thursday, the US Men's National Team World Cup qualifying roster was released for these upcoming World Cup qualifiers against El Salvador, Canada, and Honduras this upcoming week. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look on how these picks affect our World Cup qualifying games and, you know, some takeaways from the roster. So let's get straight into it. All right, so moving on to the goalkeepers, this will be a very interesting battle. Greg Berhalter said in a press conference that all three of these guys are in contention to start in any of these games. I highly doubt that one player will play all three games and that one player will each get a game. I'm going to assume that one player will get two games and another will get one. So I think it's just going to come down to who does the best in, you know, training camp. But anyway, this goalkeeper battle is something to keep an eye on. Okay, so taking a look at this defender group, you have six center backs and four outside backs. Now, I think James Sands specifically tells us that Greg Berhalter is probably going to utilize the 5-2-3 at some point. But Mark McKenzie, John Brooks, and Miles Robinson, all three of those guys would be too expected. And I expect them to get a good chunk of minutes um, in World Cup qualifying this window. James Sands, like I just mentioned, can play in that top center back role. The hybrid six slash CDM was very good doing that at the Gold Cup team ream. Um, just gonna simply say it should not be with his national team anymore. Did some good things, but his time's done. Uh, too slow. Yes, he can put his left foot, but still, so can Chris Richards. And a guy like Chris Richards, yes, he's not getting significant playing time at the moment, but you know, there's still no reason to leave one of your most talented and best defenders off this roster. I think Tim or er, Chris Richards still could have had a good impact, you know, this cycle. Walker Zimmerman, yes, he's here. I don't expect him to get a lot of playing time, but is there if we tend to utilize the 5 2 3 a lot? So four outside backs, Anthony Robinson and George Bello. Now this says a lot because typically we've only gone with the one left back and Anthony Robinson and done a lot of, you know, rotation with this left back. However, Berhalter going with two right backs and two left backs, the two right backs being Des and Yedlin, which again, both guys can play on the wing back or as a right back. But him calling up two left back tells me that he's going to be using Serginho Des at right back specifically. And I highly doubt he's going to get many minutes at uh, left back. George Bello, um, I think he's good. He has a lot of upside, but I just don't think he's ready uh, for this national team quite yet. I think he has a lot of good attributes, uh, especially going forward, but defensively on the road and World Cup qualifying. Maybe a little bit shaky, but I expect George Bello to get, you know, a few amount of minutes to rest a few guys if we're winning in case. But overall, I think his defender group is still pretty solid. I think Berhalter is moving on from uh, Dest from the left back and, you know, locking him into that right back spot. No Reggie Cannon, which is a little bit interesting. But I think that comes down to his playing time of playing two tournaments this summer. But I think the main thing here is no Chris Richards, but I still think this defender group is super solid, so super excited. All right, so this midfielder group is very interesting. Again, I think McKinney and Adams were for sure to be expected. But I just think having five midfielders was a little bit whack, but I think it just goes back to Berhalter that he's probably going to utilize a lot of the 5-2-3 um, with two central midfielders. Kilna Costa, another guy that was expected to be here at a phenomenal Gold Cup, was really good at that sixth spot, so I expect Acosta to get a good chunk of minutes uh, to rest Tyler Adams for other games. Sebastian Legit, I think we all knew he was going to be here. I'm I'm not buying into some of this Legit hype that a lot of people are saying. Some people be like, yes, Sebastian Legit, key player for this team, you know, really good. Maybe not a starter, but he's definitely saw a depth piece. But like, the more I watch Legit, he's just so limited, especially going forward. I just don't really see, you know, you know, I understand the hype that Legit brings. He's like, he just so, plays so negative. I would have much rather seen a guy like uh, Luca De La Torre or Julian Green be called in here instead. But I hope Sebastian Legette can prove me wrong and do some good things in this window. Christian Roldan, he's an average player. Um, I don't think he should be a, a part of this team, in my opinion, the A team especially. I think Eunice Musa would have 100% have been here had it not been for his injury. But Berhalter did say this week that there was a strong possibility that both Gio Reyna and Brennan Anderson will get minutes centrally in this World Cup qualifying window. So that's something to keep on as well. And I think. Playing one of those two in the midfield will also as well make our team just so much better. All two, Both of those guys can, you know, link play better and they're just so much, you know, eager to go forward and they don't really play the ball back a lot. So anyway, this midfielder group a little bit whack, but there's still some solid pieces. Yes, the Musa injury did kind of set us back a little bit, but I think this midfielder group overall is still pretty solid. All right, so looking at the eight guys that Burhalter listed to play up top. Oh my goodness, this is super, super exciting. Look how stacked this team is. Christian Pulisic, I'm going to assume he's going to be back from COVID. I doubt he starts the first game in San Salvador against El Salvador on the road just because he's recovering and building back up his match fitness. Uh, Tim Weah, a good player, can play on the left or the right, a super silky player. Brendan Aronson can play on the wing or midfield, so again, another key and uh, versatility piece. 
Connor De La Fuente made this roster super excited. I think there's a little bit of doubt that he might have been here just because he hadn't been getting a lot of minutes till late. But this Conrad had guys I'm really buying into this player. I think he's really good and I hope he gets some good minutes. Um, I'm going to assume Conrad, most of his minutes this window will come off the bench. So Conrad off the bench with his speed, his you know 1v1 ability, be an absolute nightmare for teams in CONCACAF. Gio Reyna, fingers crossed this man plays centrally, but if he does play out wide, it's not the end of the world, still a very good player. But oh my goodness, these five wingers, all three of these guys are under 23 years old and they're just super, super good. So look how stacked we are. Up top, Josh Sargent and Jordan P. Falk to lead the lines. I expect him to rotate. Uh, Josh Sargent probably going to start two games. P. Falk to start one. And I think the main thing here from the strikers is Ricardo Pepe uh, said he was going to play with the U.S. Men's National Team. That is a fantastic and massive pickup for both Brian McBride, Greg Berhalter, and the U.S. Men's National Team program. I think Pepe is a very good player right now. Not necessarily one of our top three strikers at the moment, but getting him in this team, getting him with the system, maybe giving him you know, 30 minutes off the bench, you know, between these three games. I think Ricardo Pepe has so much upside and is such a very strong and versatile striker that could really be a factor in this pool for years to come. But man, we just have a plethora of lethal options in this attacking group. You could pick about any three of these guys to mix and match two wingers, one striker, and I'd be happy with about any of them. And especially with this rotation, you know, how stacked we are and our depth up top is something that's absolutely critical and fa fantastic to see. So anyway, I'm just super stoked about how good our attacking group is. So well done, uh, so Greg Berhalter for calling up all these guys. Anyway, guys, that will do it for this video. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Smash the thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. I would love to hit that subscribers by the end of the year. That is my personal goal. But anyway, my main takeaway is super stacked roster, guys. They can play multiple positions. Now, I think specifically my thing I want to see the most is Rain play centrally. I think that would just make us you know just such a better team but this team is capable of getting nine points now that will be difficult so i think we can we can't get no less than seven points in this window considering our roster um three games all will be tough all will be battles but at the end of the day i think we can do it let's go out there let's play with that chip on our shoulder and let's go you know set ourselves up and get in a good position for these next windows and qualify for the world cup but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time